Hello everyone, this is a video on what I recommend to feed your hatchling leopard tortoise. Each species of tortoise have very different dietary requirements and some foods that may be perfect for one species could be highly damaging for another species. So this video is just focused on leopard tortoises dietary requirements and is based on lots of research that I've done into this subject from organisations that conduct in-depth analysis on tortoise feeding and nutrition as well as my experience and what I personally feed my hatchling tortoises in the UK through the different seasons we have here. There are so many conflicting and confusing views on what to feed leopard tortoises on the internet and some information out there can actually harm your tortoise so this video is to just to give you the basic guidelines on what I'd recommend to feed your hatchling tortoise to give it the best start in life. And once you're used to feeding these basic foods to your hatchling, you can then expand on this by doing more research on the internet or reading books to give them more variety in their diet. You can also do further research on the quality of weeds, the different soil types, the benefits of calcium, vitamin D3, UVB and the effect different temperatures have on your hatchling. The topics that I'll be covering are what to feed in the spring and summer, what to feed in the autumn and winter. As I mentioned earlier this video is focused on what you can feed your leopard tortoise in the UK in the different seasons we have here. However the food requirements I'll be covering are also applicable to other countries too. So for example if you live in the warmer climates you can follow the spring and summer guidelines and if you live in the cooler climates, you can follow the autumn and winter guidelines. How much to feed, how often to feed, when to feed, growing your own tortoise food, and I'll also include my go-to websites at the end of the video. Leopard tortoises come from grassy and dry habitats, so in the wild their diet will mainly consist of grasses and hays, as well as a smaller amount from the wide variety of weeds and flowers found in their natural habitat. Although we can't give them exactly what they would eat in the wild, we can give them just as good alternatives that are high in fibre and low in protein. These high fibre foods are essential for the health and development of your hatchling tortoise. So the first topic is what to feed your hatchling leopard tortoise in the spring or summer months. This is also relevant for those of you that live in warmer climates too. The basic guidelines on what to feed your hatchling leopard tortoise are 70% grasses or hay, and the remaining 30% to be made up of tortoise safe weeds or flowers or if you prefer three quarters grass and hay and a quarter weeds or flowers. I'll go through next the types of grasses and hays as well as some of the weeds and flowers that are usually readily available in our UK gardens or fields, parks, hedgerows, things like that. If you're wanting to pick weeds and flowers from anywhere other than your own garden then you'll obviously need to get the relevant permissions to do this first and also you need to make sure the items you're picking are not a protected flower or plant. One of the grasses which is suitable is Timothy grass or Timothy hay. Now I personally don't have this growing naturally in my garden but I have grown from seed in tubs and also seed trays and I either cut some of the grass to give with their food or I put the complete tray in the tortoise table for the tortoises to graze on. Timothy grass seeds are available online or you may be able to get them from your local garden centre. Timothy hay is simply dried Timothy grass and there are many companies out there that supply Timothy hay such as Oxbow, Great and Small and Alfalfa King. Now a word of caution with the different hays, sometimes I've noticed that when I've bought the identical brand from the same pet shop or supplier, it was spiky and tough with lots of seed heads and other times it looks soft and more green than yellow and other times it's quite green. This I found out was to do with the cut of the hay that it's come from. The first cut by the farmer of the hay tends to be tough and spiky with lots of seed heads and it also tends to be lighter with more yellow and brown parts than green. The first cut is high in fibre but the spikes could damage your tortoise's eyes or mouth. So I would strongly recommend avoiding this one. The second cut of hay is softer and it has a mix of stems and leaves. It has fewer stems and is higher fibre than the first cut and it's also darker green in colour than the first cut which tends to be more yellowy. 
The third cut of hay is the softest and it's almost 100% leaf so it's the greenest of all of the cuts and it's also the lowest in fibre. So if you're wanting to use Timothy hay then I'd recommend the second cut which is the highest in fibre and has less spiky seed heads. This is also the one that is greener than the first but still has a bit of yellow in it. You can buy Timothy hay or the other hays that I'll be going through from a pet shop but they are unlikely to know if it's a first cut, second cut or third cut. So you're better off looking at how soft and green it looks through the packaging. A better option is to get it from your local horse feed supplier as they will often know which cut it's come from and this option is much, much cheaper than pet shops. Also, they can offer smaller bags of hay rather than getting a big, huge bale for one tiny tortoise. Meadow grass or hay is also suitable for your hatchling. Meadow grass is a particular type of grass which looks like this. The grass on some garden lawns contains some or all meadow grass but it's more commonly found in fields or meadows. You can buy meadow grass seeds online or you may be able to get them from your local garden centre. The meadow hay is simply dried meadow grass. This for example is a large bag of meadow hay from a local horse feed shop and it cost me £1.20. Sometimes meadow hay is mixed with other grasses and these meadow hay mixes are absolutely fine to give to your leopard tortoise. For example, the meadow hay in this picture is actually mixed with a little rye grass and is safe to feed your hatchling. Orchard grass or orchard hay is also suitable for your hatchling. Orchard grass is a particular type of grass which looks like this. This again can be found on some garden lawns but more commonly in fields or pastures. You can buy orchard grass seed online or you may be able to get it from your local garden centre. The orchard hay is simply the dried orchard grass. Lawn grass is usually fine too but if your lawn is anything like mine it could have some weeds growing in it so you'll need to carefully check that the grass that you're cutting for your hatchling doesn't have any weeds or plants that are toxic to tortoises for example buttercups, daisies, ferns and so on. Remember variety is key, so ideally include all the grasses and hays I've mentioned but more realistically pick one or two grasses and one or two hays and give this to your hatchling. As I mentioned previously, this video is aimed at what grasses and hay we have available to us in the UK, so if you don't have the grasses I've just been through then here are a few other alternatives which are just as good. So we've covered grasses and hays, now we'll talk about the weeds and flowers. The remaining 30% of your hatchling's diet should be made up of a variety of weeds and flowers. The next few slides will show the basic weeds and flowers that you can offer your hatchling. There are many, many more weeds and flowers that are suitable, but the selection that I've included should be readily available or they are easy to grow in UK gardens and greenhouses and they're all tortoise safe weeds and flowers. For beginners and others, the list of weeds that can and cannot be fed is quite daunting, but don't be put off by this and resort to supermarket greens as weeds and flowers are by far the best nutritionally for your hatchling than the supermarket greens and your tortoise will be much happier and healthier if you spend the time finding what you have available in your garden not to mention the money you'll save by not buying supermarket greens. Wild weeds and flowers are not only high in fibre, but they have the correct calcium phosphorus ratio that is required for your tortoise. So to get you started, I've put together a smaller list from the previous slides of some of the suitable weeds, plants and leaves that you should have available in your garden or ones that you can easily identify and use. To start you'll need the 70% grass and hay mix we've talked about previously. Next, make up the remaining 30% by picking 5 to 6 items from the weeds, flowers and leaves that I've listed. For example, the 3 weeds you could pick one day could be dandelion, plantain, sow thistle. Then pick one from the flower list like pansy and then two from the leaves list like rose petal leaves and campanula leaves. Then each day change the 30% weed and flower mix to a different combination to give your hatchling the variety it needs to be healthy. With regards to supplements, hatchlings require more dietary supplements of vitamins, minerals and extra calcium sprinkled on their food compared to the adults. 
It's also worth mentioning that juveniles and egg-laying females also require increased frequency of dietary supplements too. We'll start with the vitamins and mineral supplements first. My preferred option is Nutribel. It is quite pricey, but it's worth it as it contains all the necessary vitamins and minerals to encourage good bone development in hatchlings. Another alternative is Vionate. I personally haven't used this, but looking at the vitamins and minerals listed on both options, both appear to contain similar to each other. So either one would be perfectly fine. I suggest giving a small sprinkle of the vitamins and minerals powder on the prepared food every other day. Next is the calcium supplement. Again, hatchlings require additional calcium to ensure they have healthy, strong bones and shells. There are many options out there, such as calci dust, or you can use limestone flour. This is fairly reasonably priced if you get it from a horse feed supplier. Or you can grind down cuttlefish to make your own calcium powder. This is by far the cheapest option. I also recommend placing whole cuttlefish in your tortoise's enclosure so they can nibble on this if they need any extra calcium, as well as it also helps naturally um, wear down their beaks as they nibble on it. I suggest giving a small sprinkle of the calcium powder on their prepared food every other day and would recommend doing this the alternate days to the days that you're using the mineral and vitamin supplements. It's also advisable, in my opinion, to leave one day supplement free. So for example, you could use the supplements as follows. Monday, Wednesday and Fridays use Nutribel. Tuesdays, Thursdays, Saturdays use calcium powder. And Sundays leave free of any supplements. Before we move on to winter feeding, I'll show you a quick demo on how I prepare the spring and summer food for my hatchling leopard tortoises. First you'll need to cut some grass. You'll need to make sure that you don't use grasses that are anywhere near exhaust fumes or anywhere where chemicals have been sprayed, for example weed killer, as this could be fatal to your tortoise. Any grasses that you've collected will need to be thoroughly washed in cold water before giving to your tortoise. Normal tap water is fine, but if you have filtered water or rainwater or cooled boiled water, then that would be even better. Next, rinse the grass a second time in cold water again. Now we need to cut the washed grass into bite-sized pieces. These pieces are roughly half an inch long. You'll need to make sure you remove any weeds that aren't safe for your tortoise. This is a buttercup leaf, so we need to remove that. Um, this dandelion leaf is okay to give to your tortoise, so we'll include this one. Next, we need to collect the tortoise safe weeds. So this is plantain. And this is pansy leaves. And this is bristly ox tongue. A little bit of clover. Some dandelion leaves. and some cat's ear and finally some broadleaf plantain Next, wash the weeds you've collected in cold water And as before, you'll need to rinse the weeds a second time in cold water. Mm. 
Next we do the same as we did with the grass and chop the weeds into bite-sized pieces. Next we move on to preparing the hay. In this example I'm using great and small Timothy rich hay and what we need to do is just make sure there's no spiky or tough bits in the hay as we're cutting through and you can normally feel it as the scissors stop suddenly if there's a tough bit like you can just see here. Just remove those and once again cut into about half an inch long pieces. So here are the items we prepared earlier, chopped fresh grass, chopped weeds and chopped hay. Now we mix these items together. So it's 30% weeds with 70% mixture of grass and hay. Please bear in mind that I currently have quite a few hatchlings to feed so you won't be needing to feed as much food as I've shown in this video but hopefully it will give you an idea of what I feed my leopard tortoises and I'll go through the quantities required for one hatchling later on in the video. Then just mix these all together. This is now ready to give to your hatchling on their food dish with a sprinkle of calcium powder or Nutribal. Any leftover weeds or grass can be stored in the fridge for up to three days. The hay will need to be stored in a cool dry place. The next section is what to feed your hatchling tortoise in the colder months in the UK when the spring and summer foods are scarce. As mentioned previously, this is a basic summary of the foods to offer your leopard tortoise and it's aimed at people who are either new to owning this breed of tortoise or those who are confused about the conflicting information out there and it's meant to give a good base to start from and build on as you get used to what to look out for rather than give up and resorting to the less healthier option of the supermarket foods. So the basic guidelines for winter are identical to the summer months so it's 70% grasses and haze and the remaining 30% is made up of tortoise safe weeds and flowers. The grasses and hays are the same as we've been through previously. However, in frosty and snowy spells, you may not have easy access to the grasses outside to cut for your hatchling. So instead, you can plant trays of grasses indoors or in a greenhouse for the winter months. If you're struggling to access fresh grass, then you could use ready grass as a temporary alternative until the fresh grass is available again. But still mix this with the hays to make up the 70% grass hay mix that you're after. I personally haven't used ready grass for my hatchlings, but it is recommended on some of my go-to websites. Ideally, you should be feeding your hatchling the same weeds and flowers seen in the previous slides, or any tortoise-safe weeds and flowers listed on other websites. But even the most prepared tortoise keepers may still struggle to feed the ideal variety in the winter. So another alternative is to feed supermarket salad mixes, providing there's no fruit, for example, peppers, tomatoes, and things like that, or root vegetables. The next few slides I'll go through are what supermarket salad mixes I've found are the best and which I'd recommend to pick from. The salad mixes I'll be going through are from Tesco supermarket, but other supermarkets have similar salad mixes and you can check the ingredients to make sure they don't contain any items that should be avoided for your tortoise. The items marked in red should be avoided. Those marked in orange are okay occasionally and those marked in green are safe to feed. I've also marked some items with an asterisk as these items need to be fed in with a variety of other high fiber foods and ideally not on their own. These are some of the salad mixes I've looked into and I've checked the ingredients with other websites and books on what is safe to feed. So these are my recommendations on what is best to feed when your selection of weeds and flowers are looking a bit sparse 
and should only be used occasionally and you should revert back to your weeds and flower selection once they become available again. Here are some more options of salad mixes you can use. Once again only use these as a last resort when your weeds and flowers are unavailable or in short supply. The ingredients of these bag salad mixes may change in the future so please just double check the ingredients in case it does contain food that is best to be avoided. Some salad mixes contain items that are not recommended for your tortoise, for example chives, parsley, spinach etc. So the items listed on this slide I'd recommend avoiding unless you pick through and remove the items that are harmful. And here are some more salad mixes that I'd recommend avoiding as they contain spinach and other items that aren't recommended for your tortoise. Whichever salad mixes you pick, you should still try to mix in some of the coarser weeds and flowers when possible to give them the nutrition, variety, fibre and calcium phosphorus ratio that they need. Also I'd recommend rotating the bag salads rather than just picking one so they get the variety they need. You can also buy dried flowers that are safe for tortoises, but I personally prefer to give fresh grasses, weeds and flowers whenever possible. If you do use dried flowers then I'd suggest moistening them with water so they are soft before you feed them to your hatchling. For variety you can also occasionally include a small amount of chopped dark green leafy vegetables, for example curly kale, spring greens or romaine or lamb's leaf. This example is a basic diet you can offer your hatchling in the winter. As before, this example is just to get you started and it is intended that you use this as a base then build up the variety of food you offer your hatchling once you're familiar with the basics. Then you can do further research into the variety you offer your hatchling. So to start you'll need the 70% of the hay and grass mix we've talked about previously with the replacement food as required. Next make up the remaining 30% by picking as many weeds, flowers and leaves that you have available and then top up with bag salad. You can also supplement their winter diet with a high fibre pellet, for example grassland tortoise food. This will need to be softened in warm water for about five minutes before you mix it in with their food. Supplements to add to your hatchling's food in the winter months are the same as the warmer months we covered previously. So as before, alternate your vitamin and mineral powder with your calcium powders and leave one day free of supplements. I'll now give a quick demo on how I prepare the autumn and winter food for my hatchling leopard tortoises. Again, please bear in mind that I currently have quite a few hatchlings to feed so you won't be needing as much food as I've shown in the video but for one hatchling but it will hopefully give you an idea on what I feed my tortoises in the colder months in the UK. In this demo I'll be using the ingredients found in the Floret Crispy Salad, the green label. So here we have radicchio, frise and lamb's lettuce. So for each of these items just snip off a few bite sized pieces and put them into a bowl ready for washing. Next you'll need to add in some tortoise safe weeds if you have any. So this is bristly ox tongue and we also have some plantain. Then chop the weeds that you've got and put them into your salad mix. Now we need to wash the salad mix in cold water. So here are the prepared winter foods. We have the salad and weed mix, 
we have the grasses and we have the haze. I'll be showing you a number of different options for the winter feeding. So the first option here is the 30% salad mix with a few weeds in it and 70% grasses and haze. So the second option is using the Zoomed grassland tortoise food. So you'll need two or three of these pellets and then you'll need to add a little bit of warm water just to soften them before you feed them to your hatchling. I found that my hatchlings don't like the pellets on their own so I tend to mix in a little bit of the salad mix or weeds with a little bit of the grass and then the pellets as well. So what we've got in the pot so far isn't quite the 70% grass and hay mix that we're after. So to build that up to 70% we need to add a pinch of either the hay, the grass or a few extra pellets and then we can mix them all together. The third option is if you don't have any grass available at all. So we'll be using hay and the Zoomed grassland tortoise pellets and we'll be using the supermarket salad mix that we prepared before. This is now ready to give to your hatchling on their food dish with a sprinkle of calcium powder or Nutribel. Temperatures have an impact on how your tortoise digests its food. If it's too cold, your tortoise will take longer to digest its food and will require less food. If it's warmer, your tortoise will digest its food quicker and may eat more. In most of my videos, I put in the temperature slide as a reminder on the recommended temperatures as leopard tortoises are particularly sensitive to incorrect temperatures and getting this wrong could lead to serious health implications and a small hatchling could become very ill very quickly as they can't keep their heat very long. So as a reminder, I recommend that the temperatures should be as follows. Daytime 24 to 28 degrees C, basking area temperature should be 30 to 32 degrees C and nighttime around 22 degrees C but should never go below 20 degrees C. I'd also recommend getting your hatchling out in the sunshine as much as possible but only when the temperatures permit. If you want more information on temperatures and setting up your tortoise table then I do have some other videos on this. The next topic is how much to feed. So my recommendation to get you started is to feed your hatchling an amount that is roughly half to three quarters the size of the shell of your hatchling. Then keep an eye on their weight gain as you're aiming for approximately one to two grams weight gain on average per week for the first year and adjust the amount of food you give them accordingly. The one to two grams per week is only a rough guide on the likely weight of your hatchling I do have another video on weighing and measuring your hatchling that goes into more detail on this topic and the things that may cause an increase or a decrease in your hatchling's weight as well as my own hatchling growth charts for you to have a look at. It's really important not to overfeed your hatchling as it's far better for your hatchling's health if they're slightly hungry and active rather than overfed and end up with lumpy shells and are lethargic and sleepy as this could lead to other health problems later on. Next, how often to feed your hatchling? I recommend feeding your hatchling only once per day. Some people prefer to feed smaller amounts twice a day and other people prefer to feed their hatchlings every other day. But to keep it simple, just feed them once a day. Next, we're gonna talk about when to feed your hatchling. I recommend feeding your hatchling in the morning and at the same time each morning. Also, if it's bath day for your hatchling, then I recommend bathing your tortoise before you feed them, as they normally look for food immediately after their bath. It's also worth mentioning that tortoises can get very stressed if you change their environment around, 
So my recommendation is to also keep their food and water bowls in the same place in their enclosure. And I tend to put their food and water away from the basking areas so it keeps the food fresher for longer and it also encourages them to exercise and wander around their enclosure when they want to eat or drink. Next we're going to talk about growing your own tortoise food. I will do another video on how to grow your own tortoise food as it is very satisfying seeing your hatchling enjoying eating the food you have spent the time and effort growing for them. Also you'll know exactly what you're feeding them and will be safe in the knowledge that you've grown in safe soil, no weed killers or chemicals have been sprayed on or near the food that you're offering to your hatchling. Again, don't be overwhelmed with the vast number of weeds and flowers to grow. I suggest starting with say four or five different varieties of weeds or flowers from the list we've talked about earlier. Then you can expand on this once you've become used to it. Most packets of seeds are very reasonably priced, normally around one to two pound per pack. So my personal preference is to buy individual packets of seeds for one particular weed or flower rather than the assorted tortoise weed mixes on offer, purely so that you can make sure you know what weeds you're feeding them. Another great reason to grow your own tortoise food is that it will take the stress out of trying to find uh, food for your hatchling over the colder months when the weeds and flowers aren't as readily available as you could plant these in a greenhouse or indoors over the winter months. I've mentioned a few times in this video about my go-to websites so these are some of my favourites. The Tortoise Trust. This is a really useful website on tortoise husbandry and they have loads of useful information to help you give the best care for your tortoise. The Tortoise Table. This is another really useful and easy to use website to check which plants and weeds are safe for your tortoise. Tortoise Lady is another useful website and has detailed information on weeds and plants available in gardens in the UK. I've also included the Tortoise Trust Plant Foods link as this goes into detail on soil types etc and has references to other websites and books relating to tortoise food. And for the seeds websites, there are many companies out there that offer seeds for weeds and flowers that are safe for your tortoise. An example of one of these are shelled warriors or you can search for a particular seed that you're after on Amazon or eBay. I also highly recommend that you join a tortoise group or society in your area. You can normally find these from a simple Google search or join a tortoise forum like Tortoise Trust as the founders or members for both tortoise groups and forums are highly experienced and knowledgeable and they're only too willing to help answer questions you have, for example, identifying different weeds in your garden or general questions that you have looking after your hatchling. So in summary, my recommendations on the basic guidelines on what to feed your hatchling leopard tortoise are 70% grasses and haze mixed with 30% of tortoise safe weeds and flowers. Change the selection of weeds, flowers, grasses and haze each day to give your tortoise the variety it needs to be healthy. Only pick from areas that have no exhaust fumes or chemicals and avoid feeding plants and flowers to your tortoise that have come straight from garden centres or florists as these can have chemicals that are harmful and only use the new growth on these plants or flowers once they have been established for a while. Always wash their food in clean cold water, I normally do this twice, before giving to your tortoise. Chop up their food into bite sized pieces and make sure there are no sharp or tough bits in the hay. Avoid overfeeding your tortoise, so feed once daily and throw away any uneaten food at the end of the day to avoid it going off. Sprinkle their food with supplements every other day and leave one day clear of supplements. Be prepared for the winter months by planting out a selection of weeds, flowers and grasses in a mini greenhouse or a cold frame or indoors. And finally, please do your own research using the websites I've mentioned previously and you'll give your little hatchling a healthy and nutritious diet and the best start in life. Thanks for watching my video. And if you've enjoyed it, please click the thumbs up and subscribe to see my other videos.